Hello and welcome to this week's Devon the Detail podcast. I'm Rob Parkson and we're here talking all things Salford Red Devils. Joining the show this week, as ever, we've got Paul Parkin. How's your been, mate? Yeah, um, it kind of uh, kind of flown by really a little bit. I think it's been a bit of a strange week. Um, taking me a few days to get over the weekend. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I was in a bit of a dark place for a couple of days, I'll say that. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's been okay. You know, again, the, the weather's been up and down and it? monsoon season's here. Um, so we've had a bit of everything. So it's been interesting trying to do the washing. Um, but other than that, yeah, no, no, it's been a been a good week big build up to this weekend's game which is good you know really exciting really looking forward to and i will talk about it in a bit but it's um yeah it's the big one isn't it this is the one that i think most people look forward to most of the year and it's uh yeah so it's, it's a big week for the club yeah like you said defeat last week disappointed we'll be talking about that building up to the big wigan game the weekend with the armed forces appreciation day and you know, ticket sales, I'm being told, they are good. So hopefully we'll uh, get a lot of uh, fans, new fans and old fans, down to the Salford City Stadium on Sunday to enjoy the big festival that's going on and also watch uh, Salford over a bit, Wigan. Yeah, I mean, that, that would top the day, wouldn't it? But uh, yeah, everything that the club are putting into it, you know, the, the advertising, everything they've done, they, we deserve a response from, from people. I mean, last week won't have helped in, in many ways but um i, I think uh, I, I think the club deserve you know de- deserve a big crowd at last um they're, they're putting a lot in i know today they've, I think they've announced things for every game now aren't they going forward some kind of event at every match i think that's mm-hmm. that's going to happen but uh, instantly you can see the difference that you know this little bit of money's had to the club um and and you know huge respect to those people from the armed forces as well who were giving up the time uh, and those who have already helped promote it, from you know the guys based at Barton and everything, it's been it's been it's been a big week for the club. Um, and like I say, hopefully, I mean there's supposed to be a bit of bad weather about on Sunday, but uh, hopefully it can hold off until after the game. But we are cursed; we know that that <laughs> ground has definitely got some kind of uh, yeah. We upset somebody building that there, but um, you never know. The weather could change. We have a wonderful boiling hot day, sunshine, wall to wall. We can bring a lot of fans down. We've got ours there. Let's just hope for a great day. Yeah, going to be exciting. But we'll start with a defeat last week against OKR in the Challenge Cup. So, Salford are out of the Challenge Cup, beaten by Hulkington Rovers, 28 points to 10 at Craven Park. Park Disappointing performance, I thought, from the boys. Obviously, the big build-up, fans getting excited about the possibility of reaching Wembley. And really, a non-performance for me. Yeah, it was it, it was poor. You know what I said at the time, and I've thought about it all week. But it it reminded me of the bad old days of. Mm. It, it, I know this isn't happening, and I'm not saying it is. This is you know, but it reminded me of the days where there was always something going on in the camp. There was always somebody who wasn't happy. There was somebody had done something behind the scenes or whatever, and it seemed like the, the team had no communication with each other. It was no. Not a lack of effort, because I don't think any player would ever go out and not put the effort in, but it wasn't the usual Salford team that will fight and scrap for everything that we, we used to. Some of our defending was quite laughable at times, unfortunately. You know, we had we had average players running through us. We had, we made George King look like uh, Gordon Tallis or Adrian Morley or something at times. It was, you know, quite embarrassing. I mean... The, 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 I know we'll go through the tries, but the Mikey Lewis, where, where he's tapping ball quick, and we're not, we're not watching. I mean, one of the first things you taught as a kid is just turn and face, mm. turn and face. It's so simple, and we didn't, you know, half the team. This isn't two or three players. It's half a team not paying attention, not switched on, not ready. Uh, and I've looked for excuses through the week, but we we can't have had any. You know, we stayed over the night before. We hadn't just travelled up there on a two-hour coach journey. It was, you know, they were fresh. The lads were ready. Um, Conditions were were fine for rugby league. It, there's, there was no reason for it. And like you say, I think that the thing is, the, the performance was flat and disappointing. But I think in ourselves, I think we'd all built it up that we were, you know, whole KR had five or six players missing, key players. We're going to go there, we're going to win that, we're in a semi-final. Foregone conclusion in many ways. Mm-hmm. I, I know I fell into that trap and it's a silly trap because, you know, sport's not played on paper. It's, you know, it's what happens on the day and, Sadly, we just didn't we didn't turn up. We didn't get off the coach. Um, and even at times where we thought we were getting back into the game, there was silly mistakes, sloppy. 
offloads that don't need to be made. I know that's the way we play. I know, you know, you, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But at the same point, you've still got to have a little bit of, you know, as an individual, you've got to be sensible and go, don't give this ball. You know, it's not odd. And they just give it anyway. Or try to offload an attacker where you're wrapped up. Just don't do it. Um, and I know sometimes it comes off and we look great. The week before at Cass, you know, it, things, everything seemed to fall into place for us. Hull kind of a good team. We're playing at home in front of their crowd, which is a massive boost for them. And it does influence the referee. Paul Rowley was right. I'm not blaming the ref. That's nothing to do with it. I'm just saying, you know, you can get decisions when you need them every now and then. But our performance overall was the worst I've seen in uh, easily oh, well over 12 months, you know, early part of last season when things probably weren't going well. When we had injuries, we had, you know, 17 players missing at one point last year before we went on that magical run. This week, we had no excuses. You know, OK, no Andy Ackers, always a blow um, and, and no right. But we're going to have to live with that. But the rest of it, that's, that's virtually a fully fit team. And we just didn't show up. And, it, and it's, it is disappointing. I think Paul said in his post-match uh, sort of analysis at the game that you only get one shot at this. And we, we've blown it. Uh, that was a winnable game. Uh, and, and then you never know from there. I know the draw has not been overly kind in any way to to, to all KR, but you, you've got to play you're playing in the semi-final of the cup and it'd have been nice just to have been there and again that momentum that we built would have carried on so it'd be interesting to see how we respond yeah i mean could it have been the pressure uh, obviously the, the the rowley ball way is about the players sort of being relaxed and and playing uh, a, a brand of rugby that isn't tense it's all flowing and did the, the pressure of, of that possible semi-final get into the players' heads and not being able to, to perform? For me, it just didn't click. Like you said, there was, there was no zip to it. Uh, I don't think it was a particularly bad performance, um, but I just thought it was a non-performance. And I, I say at the biggest game of the season, you want to you want to see them firing. And, and for them not to fire, you start thinking, well, why, why was that? Why did we not fire? I'm sure Paul Rowley and, and Kurt Haggerty and the rest of the coaching staff have, have sat down this week and, and and analysed all the all the processes that they've put in place. You know why that didn't happen, and I'm sure you know they they were looking at. And I'm sure the players will have sat down themselves and, and had that conversation, among, you know, amongst themselves because it was an opportunity, wasn't it? It was an opportunity for, for this club to to step into that spotlight and 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 for the the outside world to see what sort of Red Devils are all about. And for us not to not to put in a performance took that away. Um, it was disappointing. I thought, I'm not devastated by it because I always think the Challenge Cup is the, is just a gateway to, to to a better club. It's not the be-all and end-all. When you win the Challenge Cup, the journey doesn't end. It has to continue. So for us not to get through to a semi-final, it does make the journey longer. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think, like you say about the performance, it, it was flat. That was the thing. It was absolutely flat. There was no spark to us. There was no... I, I don't think any one individual did any favours to themselves. But what you said there about the players talking, you know, after, you know, during the week and everything about it, they'll be the ones that are most disappointed. Mm. You want to play at Wembley. You want to play in the cup final. You're a kid growing up. That's You know, I remember when I was playing, I wanted to go to Wembley. I wanted to play in the Challenge Cup final. At the time, winning the league was what it was, you know, also about. In the other grand final or anything like that, finishing top of the league. But going to Wembley was the the pinnacle of a man's career at that point, or, or, or you know, the ladies these days. Um, and, and then players won't be doing that, and some of them players might not get another shot. Mm. You know, uh, it's it's that kind of thing. I think that that probably will will hurt them a hell of a lot. But um, I, I just think. Yeah, I, I, I had a, I had a thought. One of the things I was thinking was, was there a touch of complacency in in our attitude that we thought we'd read the reports in the papers about their players missing? We were tipped to win the game by virtually everybody because of the two lineups and then what we'd done the week before. Hull KR have been struggling recently because of the injuries that you know the form had gone out the window. They dropped out of the top six. Did the players get something in their heads about? We'll turn up, we'll beat these. We will get ourselves out of trouble at any point. It won't matter. And then when you find yourself 18-0 down, it, it's virtually impossible. Virtually impossible. It'd take a miracle to come back from them. 
and we didn't look like we had that spark in us to do it. I think, uh, like I said, I, I try and pick somebody out of the team that I thought was was good. I, I might say Ryan Braley. I might, and, and that's not a great thing, really, because, you know, he's only going to play in an attacking force when the rest of the team's going forward. It was mainly his defence that, you know, that, that, that I looked at. Other than that, I really struggled to find a player who, who did anything that really excited me the other day. I, what I will say is full credit to OKR. I thought defensively they were they were magnificent. They gave us no room, no time. They closed all the key players down. Mark Sneed had an absolute mare. And he's been in unbelievable form. But the pressure they put on him constantly. As soon as he got the ball, he was shut down. He, he wasn't given an inch. Brody Croft couldn't get into the game. Um, it, you know, they, they did a great job on us. And, um, you know, fair play to them. But just disappointing for us. And I think the other, the other thing is, you know, financially it could have been, you know, getting to Wembley. That's where... That's where the money comes in. You know, we get to Wembley. It, there's a lot of money on the table for the club, and that's gone. That 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 revenue stream's gone for another year now. Um, but you know, we just got to we we've got to get over it quickly. You know, and it, I don't think there's any better game really. I know Kurt Haggerty said in his post match that it wouldn't matter who we played. You know, we treat everybody the same. But this is Wigan coming to town. Um, it's you know it, it'll sharpen the focus a little bit for the lads. So yeah, disappointing weekend. I was I was gutted at the game. I was I was a little bit angry. I think as well at the at the the state of some of the play that we put on. But we don't we don't perform like that. That's not Salford anymore. Mm. I've seen that for you know best part of forty odd years. It's that's them were the days where you expected to turn up and get forty put on you. You know, oh, we're going to talk okay, oh, wow. Well, Salford take a big following there on on Saturday, and again we were kind of a little bit let down. But the players will know that Paul Rowley will know that, and I'm sure they've you know they've they've spoke about it, they've analysed it, and let's hope it doesn't happen again. Yeah, so a quick look back at the the moments in the game, uh, Parker. Uh, Salford started well, a couple of opportunities early on, couldn't quite convert them, and then Hull hit the front try from Ryan Hall, big shift from uh, right to left. And Ryan Hall, you know, the top class winger he is, found the corner and Salford trailed 6 0. Yeah, I think just before that, we'd had a couple of little breaks down the left hand side. I think uh, uh, Budgie had, had a couple of breaks, uh, you know, put out there by, by Tim Laffey. And then we, the last ball had gone astray, or we just run out of tackles or ideas at one point. I think we just kicked for some bizarre reason. Um, but yeah, you know, when Ryan Hall. I, you see him go in the corner and you think, oh, has he got that down? And you go, he's right and all. Of course he got it down. Mm. That's what he does. You know, he's he's been a phenomenal finisher all his career. He's, and he's such a big man. I mean, it takes some stopping in that corner. But, um, yeah, you know, it, it, it was, it, it was again, disappointing because I think it was, it could have been avoided. They scored something similar at Magic Weekend going down that same side. And you think, oh, we did we not learn? Did we not watch? Um, but, Sometimes you just get beaten by a better play, uh, and like I say, if he's got if he's got a chance near the corner, he's probably going to score. Yeah. So old KR extended the lead to twelve points. Uh, Buster's down the middle. I think it was a fullback went over under the post uh, to go twelve and they'll open it. Obviously, at that point, we're in a bit of a mixer. But we got back of the arm wrestle. Uh, mm. Mini Chella got Simbin for fighting with Armand Roy. At that point, I was thinking we've got a man advantage here. 10 minutes before half time let's build a bit of pressure and let's test all Kingston Rovers but didn't happen did it unfortunately no I think we all thought that we thought this is our chance now they've got you know they're down to 12 men um, let's go and you know let's attack them and, and the way we play the game you know we, we we throw the ball about when we're up against 12 I mean it's hard to stop us when they've got 13 with 12 mm. men you're thinking okay we've got these here get Get at least one try before our time. If we go in sort of 12, 6 down, game off, no problem. We're, we're OK. But they are, these might tire in the second half because there'll be players there who haven't played a lot. The guy, like you said, fullback, I think it was his debut, wasn't it? You know, he brought him in from, from France, had there. I, you know, it, how settled was he? You know, could if he got a bit tight, was he going to get wobbler? You know, whatever. But we didn't. We, we, we just made error after error. First, second tackles, stupid little things. Um, and then the inevitable happens. Yeah, 
two before half time. Salford so concede a penalty. Quick tap, I think it was by Lewis, Fed Lynette. Um, eventually, and he went over to make it 18-0 in the corner. <laughs> Two minutes before half time, Paul Rowley's team talk goes out the window there for me, and uh, we've got a mountain to climb. Yeah, and that was the one that I was saying where the players have turned the back and given a penalty. Just, just switch on straight away. Mm. Don't, don't start questioning it. Don't just, just get back in your line, turn, face, stop the play. Mikey Lewis, quick thinking, he's had a look, seen that we're not ready, and off he goes, and that's. Uh, that'll disappoint Paul Rowley massively. That would that would anger him because it, that's slightly unprofessional. You know, we we know better than that. We're a much better side than that, um, and that then at that point I think kills the game because not only have you got to find three tries without them scoring or even getting a penalty, you've got to kick them out. You're away from home, and then you've got to score again to win the game. Mm. You know, at that point I think four scores was. I, I, I thought it was beyond us. I didn't think... And looking at the performance itself, I didn't think we had it in us. Um, it would have took a massive turnaround. And, you know, as we know, when we see the full-time score, that wasn't to be. But there was a glimmer of hope just after half-time. But, yeah, not not really good enough. Like you say, Paul Rowley, what did you say at half-time? You know? Yeah. For 12 nil, it's a different game. Yeah. Paul Rowley probably got his big white eyes out and stared at everyone. Said, uh, "Come on, lads, we've come this far. Let's not throw it all away." Uh, so, so for then, second half came out firing. Drive from uh, Tim Lafay, lovely assist by Joe Burgess, eighteen four. Um, bit more of an arm wrestle, and then Dalwood the try for them. Kick through. Uh, he picked it up and went over. And like you said at that point, you thought, mm, "I think this might be too much for us here." Yeah, well, the strange thing was that I was the guys I was with at, at the game uh, when we scored in the corner. I said, Max Neal will miss this kick. And they were like, no, he doesn't miss. I just knew it was that day. It would have, it would have landed it in 18 6. You're thinking, mm, maybe, but 18 4, yeah. you've still got to keep going on. And just them little two pointers that Max Neal hammers every time. Not, not on that day. It wasn't going to be our day. And again, yeah, their next try was just too easy. It's, it's disappointing. It's it's good play from 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 their fella, but at the same point, it's easily avoidable. You know, we just again, I think we were looking for other people to do the work that that whoever the individual you know in in front of these players should have been doing. I think we were relying too much on each other, and it needed somebody to stand up. You know, maybe putting a big crunching tackle or. Or knock the ball out of their hands near the line and, uh, you know, causing a get us fired up. But it didn't happen. And too many players had a, a poor game on the same day. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's about it, really, Parker. The, for some reason, everybody just had an off day. And and in any game, not just Challenge Cup games, you can't afford to do that. And unfortunately, I'm sure, you know, like of Paul Rowley and Kurt Aggett, he'll be trying to figure out why that happened so it doesn't happen again. Um they scored 10 minutes to go off of Burgess. Burgess tries to shepherd the ball dead, loses mm. the ball, and they crash over to make it 28-4. Um, we score at the death, Burgess. A uh, little kick by uh, Mark Sneed, and Joe Burgess ca- catches the ball and, and goes over. Neat try. Thought it looked, uh, mm. you know, it was a good, well-worked one. Uh, but, like you say, 28-10. And uh, they're through to the semi-final, and we're not. Yeah, we did have threat down that left-hand side. Like I say, in the first half, we had a few chances, Tim Lafayette. And- and, and, and Joey Burgess, you know, a great threat down that side, but we just didn't go to it enough. Mm. We lost the forward battle massively. That that was, again, disappointing. Do you know the last time I think I was that disappointed was all KR away last year? Strangely enough. Mm. Uh, they, they made us look like mugs that day, and we didn't perform. Do you remember the, the day? And yeah. I think our, top, our forwards, top metres, were like 30-odd yeah. metres, and... It was awful, and I don't know what it is about them and that place. We just do not perform. Um, mm. But it's it's over. I mean, the thing is, let's hope it is our bad performance. Let's hope that's the the you know the glitch out of the way. Uh, the main thing is now staying in the top six. Yeah, that's where we've got to be. We've got to be in the shake up for the end of the year, and we we can't let this performance derail us. The players now need to just switch on again. Yeah, we have to use this this disappointment as fuel to push us forward in this top six battle. And that's 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 the key now for, for me. Obviously, you know, Paul Raleigh will be he'll be 
he, he likes to keep everyone tight as a, as a unit and they'll, they'll have obviously conversations behind the scenes about how we've got to, got to make sure this is, this is fuel, like I say, to, to, to bigger and better things. And I'm sure they will, they, they, yeah. you know, they're, 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 a, they're a good team. Uh, they've got good players in there. They play the right way, uh, which is important because obviously I always thought, I think to yourself many, many times that when they try things and don't quite come off, um, they always go back to the well. They always go again the next play when many sulfur teams before may oh, yeah. sort of push a pass and it goes ground goes to ground and you all go oh here we go and then they don't do it again for yeah. a, a couple of games they'll just decide to to play you know up, up your jumper rugby let's be conservative let's just let's try and and not be afraid to play but this Paul Rally team isn't there's no fear at all I'm sure there's some kind of Vulcan mind trick that he must play on his you know his players where he where he says right I know you dropped the ball this time but you're not going to do it next time. Woo. And then suddenly they, you know, they, they play the same, you know, way, not, you know, playing a game where it's throwing it recklessly. Mm. It's all quite yeah. measured and it's all quite good. Um, and that's what the Paul Rowley way is. He, he knows how to get the best out of his players, but it was disappointing. And I'm sure the, the lads will be looking at bouncing back next week. Yeah. Like you said, it was good. It's sort of good analysis that, that, you know, Paul Rowley, that's the DNA. That's that's this yeah. team now, and that's how we're going to play. Uh, if it doesn't work the first time, we'll go again. We'll try again. And I agree with what you say. Salford sides in the past will have tried something. Go, oh, that was brilliant. Unlucky, but it didn't work. And then they just go to, like you say, just give it the you know the forwards and trundle it in and boot it down the pitch. It becomes boring. We, we're not afraid of trying, and that's you know that that's the good thing. And and the other thing is we mentioned it most weeks that Paul Roll is not the kind of manager that gets carried away. So he'll be looking at that now this week and he'll have forgotten about that. He'll have done the analysis. They'll sat down by Tuesday or whatever and gone, right, we look we look ahead to Wigan now. That's gone. Nothing we can do about it. You know, let's crack on. He won't, you know, he won't be berating the players every week. He won't be getting them in for, you know, an extra punishing training because of it. It's it's happened. Let's let's just get on with the game now. Um we know what we've got to do, we know how we play, we know how, we know each other. Um just keep trusting in what we do, not 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 trust the process because that's that's another manager. Uh, <laughs> that's someone else. Saying, but um, <laughs> it, 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 you're right. He does. That's the way he wants us to play, and we'll carry on playing that way. It did work last week, but the last time it didn't work was the second half against Saints. But other than that, in the last ten weeks or whatever, how many mm. times hasn't it worked? You know, we've been on a great roll. We, and we, I think, I think we're getting a bit spoiled, perhaps, and that's why I was so angry the other day. And when you think about it, you think. What we've achieved already this season, and obviously the back end of last season, is is incredible for a mm. side of made up of you know, not not you know made up of parts of, of players that people didn't want, or you know we, we're not cash rich. We can't just bring in players. We do what we do with these players. We improve them, and that for me is what great managers do. Mm. You know, you can sign a player at the top of his game. Doesn't always work. You can sign a player and improve him like a Tyler Dupree. You know, like an Andy Akers, and take him to that next level. That's your job, and that's what Paul Rowley will continue to do for this team. And you know, as the week's gone on, I've you know I've realised that it's that it, they'll be as hurt as as we were. And uh, yeah, and, and I think I can forgive them for this year now. <laughs> I was never, I was never angry. I was just puzzled. I was a bit like, why, why has that happened? And um, and and that's, I'm still, I'm still thinking that now. I'm still thinking. Why? But um, that's, that's not my job to find out why. That's yeah. Paul Rowley's job. So he, he'll know. He knows his players. He knows what makes him tick. And I'm sure he'll be ticking like a clock come uh, Sunday. Um, other things. Big thanks for your three word match reports, man of the matches. Uh, Mark, very complacent performance. Budge, Colin Wilson, second best throughout. Uh, Budge, uh, Paul Foster, uh, powder puff forwards. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think, you know, it was a. Wasn't a non performance it wasn't a bad performance. They, they grafted, but like you said, they lacked that bit of zip for me. I think, like I said before, we did, we definitely lost the forward battle, and that's mm. for a team like us who plays off the back of that. That's that's always going to hurt us. We didn't make enough meters again, mm. but I thought some of the defense in the middle was soft. That's I think that's what he's saying. You know, the amount of time I mentioned George King before, there were others. Kane Lynette, who just ran through us. Nobody's done that this year. No, nobody does that. And yet, straight through the middle. And 
Uh, like like you say, too many too many players had an off day on the same day, and that's that's the problem. Um, but yeah, I, I get what he's saying. I understand where he's coming from. I, I, I don't think he's he's having a dig as such, but he's we need our forwards to stand up, and 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 when, when they do, we're capable of beating anybody. Yeah. OSF lack any penetration. Lafay Andy Smith forgot forget about it. Lafay. And uh, Stuart Smith never in never in it. Watkins, Tony Frame, defence wins games. Chris and Janet Shenton, poor, poor, poor. Lafay slash Burgess. Uh, Dunk hype don't believe. Paul Whitesides, mate Roy Ellaby. What's another year? Uh, Anita wants to forget. Uh, Paul Whiteside, another year waiting with a little tear emoji. That was probably what most of us probably felt. Uh, Natalie Taylor, uh, Natalie Taylor, uh, Rowley proved right. I suppose about the the crowd and and, and the penalties. CEO Mike Singleton still on the bus. Uh, Mark Taylor, bad day at the office. Bondy never up ferret. Uh, Pauline Howe, bad day at the office. Burgess, um, Lynn Pike, well done, OKR. And a couple of Vulcan fans living the dream there, but that is the way it is. Obviously, there'll be another opportunity next year, another year of experience playing together, um, hopefully a, a good running up to the playoffs and beyond, and um, we might be in a better position next year to to really push for it. Yeah, I think I think thinking about it now, it's, I know it's all left books and maybes. Um, you know, if if we'd have won, would have we got the the same draw that OKR got? You know, mm. would we have got Wigan? I don't know. You, you, I think I think the thing was, I think we all thought, well, if we get if we win this, we could get Lee. Now, I, you know, Lee are, are having a great season. Don't get me wrong, I'm not. You know, but you would think you would fancy your semi final if if you got Lee. If it's that the season, someone said you're going to get Lee in the semi final, the challenge cup, you'd go, yeah, okay, I'll settle for that. You're 80 minutes from Wembley. You know what I mean? That, <laughs> it, that got in our minds. You see the draw on Sunday afternoon and you go, uh, maybe, maybe not. We could have got the You know, the draw would have been different if we'd have been, you know, because it's just the way it works. But um, I think it was that thought that maybe, just maybe we could we could just get that one tie that we wanted. Yeah. But uh, no, not, not to be, like say, another year of waiting, I mean, it's only been my whole life, so I know we had 20, 2020, but that definitely doesn't count for anything, does it? Um, but again, now it's it's done. We move on, and uh, we get an earlier crack next year, I think, don't we? I think they're really the challenge cut forward, so uh, mm. by this time next year, we might have already been in the cup final. You never know. If we'd have drawn Lee Park, it'd have been Hartburn Reds, and we'd been reaching for the Gaviscon then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, fortunately, wasn't meant to be. And, and like, like I said before, it's just a it's a it's a gateway to, to mm. be a, to be at a better club, and and I'm sure we use a disappointment to fuel the run into the playoffs and beyond for me for this year. So that was the look back at the whole KR game, and now we'll see what's happening in the in the world of South Red Devils. So Packy, we'll start with the game on Sunday. Free bus travel from mm. Bay 16 of the Trafford Centre. Uh, it goes every eight minutes from 12 o'clock. Uh, to quarter past six. I think it's great. Obviously, transport to the game is always an issue uh, for fans. So, for the club to have this um, opportunity to uh, prevent this, uh, sorry, provide this to the fans, um, you know, it's only going to be good. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. What I will say as well, I think there's a free bus going down for the Dog and Partridge as well. Yeah. Uh, in Eccles. So, that's another great way. The thing I, I've said, I don't, you know, I don't drive to games um, and Public transport to that stadium has been an issue since we moved there. We know that. And uh, there's one bus in, one bus out. The Trafford Centre option gives us a, a wider reach to other areas. You can get a bus from Stockport or from wherever to the Trafford Centre and across. You know, yourself being based in Sale, Paul being based out in the sticks. You know, <laughs> but, it's, but I mean, for me, it gives me more options to get mm. to and from because I can get a bus. I can get one to the stadium. I could also get one to the Trafford Centre or one from the Trafford Centre if one's late or, you know, whatever. This is brilliant. And this is what we've needed all the time. I remember the one we did have that used to go from there and it used to stop at the uh, the Weatherspoons. Chill Factor. 
That one, yeah, we used to, we used to go there and have a few beers before the game and get on from there. It was brilliant. It was a great option. Um, and since all that's gone, it, it has become more and more awkward. And more so for families. If you're not driving to a game and you've got kids and you've got to wait for a bus, you know, uh, and that bus will only hold so many people. And yet there's, you know, 200 people waiting at a bus stop for one bus. It just doesn't yeah. work, does it? So this is this is brilliant. I'm absolutely delighted with it. I don't know who's managed to set this up and how. And I hope it's a long term thing. I really do. I hope this can continue. Um, but it's a it's a it's a brilliant option, and uh, I hope I hope it gets well used, uh, just to show that the demand is there for it. Yeah, I think that's the key thing. It's about I used to say demand. If 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 lots of people use it, then the club will may think, well, we could do it for the next game. And then we'll see how it goes. It, it's you know an opp- like I say, it's an opportunity for for fans for people who don't normally go to the game because they'll they'll know there's a way of getting there. But I think the club's got to be brave as well. I mean they've got to continue to do it if it's fifty fifty. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. It's a big it's a big family fun day planned. We've got a fairground. We've got um, military gun firing, zorbing, uh, military village. Red Devils parachute people are delivering the match ball. I think I heard Paul King say uh, on yeah. a, I think it was Granada tonight, uh, sort of TV bit on there, which was great. Live music as well. It's just it sounds like it's going to be a really exciting day, and and that is what we we, we talk about. You know, the the product on the pitch is important, but. To be successful, I think you've got to build a, an event round it as well. And I think the club have, have gone for it, um, you know, with, with the with the Armed Forces Day, Appreciation Day. And I just hope they continue that with that vein. I really do. Well, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, me and Paul are, are very much in the same sort of mind frame. I go for the rugby and the, the, the yeah. razzmatazz and everything else around it. But I'm not everybody. You know no. what I mean? We, 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 we need to cater for absolutely everything. Fan experience now can be more key than the actual game itself. You've had a great day, but your team's been beat. Mm. You're more likely to go back. Do you know what I mean? I mean, if your team wins, obviously. But uh, I, I've been I've been to some grounds this year where I mean, Lee was brilliant. First game up, the second time was not as much, but I think it was a bank holiday or whatever. It was a Saturday, wasn't it? I think, and it was a bit more awkward. But that first game at Lee, I mean, wow, wow. Even it's not my thing, but even I was, you know, blown away by it. I thought it was brilliant. I'm not expecting Salford to spend 20, 30 grand every week on fireworks. That's not where I'm going. But the experience was great. The other thing that me and my brother have spoke about a number of times this year was Hull away. It was an early Saturday kickoff at the the KC. And and we got there and and we were greeted off the bus by somebody from Hull, you know, welcome to Hull. And there wasn't anything else really going on, but that straight away made me go, oh, thank you. You know, there's no aggression. There was no. You can turn up some grounds and you can feel like you know a spare part. Or you're not wanted, and that's not not great. And I think that's something we've got to embrace as a club. And I think the club have have a target now of, of sorting this fan experience out. I know it's it's always been difficult for us because we don't own the stadium. Mm. There's only so much we can do. We have to ask permission, I suppose, to do things. And you know, it seems ridiculous, but that's that's how it is. You know, the land around it, we don't own. Can, can we do things on there? Can we put things on it? Um, and that's that's where we've got to go. And this now, and obviously the money that's been raised can go to this, can go to promoting this, can go to getting people to organise these things. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, I think the future is going to be really, really good on that front. Um, and, and to go hand in hand with the rugby that we play, it, it, it's a winning formula. And, and I hope we can, you know, like you just said there, I hope we can push it every week now and, and get it on for every game. Yeah, it's not just about the money though, Park. It's it's about fan engagement. We we have the the Reds Rise Together campaign and and the new sort of shareholders who have, have spent the money to invest in the club. It's a big moment, really, for 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 you to go out and and, and try and attract a potential new fan in or a, or a lapsed fan in. What have you done this week to promote this game on Sunday? I'll tell you what I did. I was on Solve City Radio Tuesday and Wednesday this week on the Sports Zone, me and Paul, talking about the game to 30,000 people. Can't guarantee that 30,000 people will, will turn up, but they know yeah. it's there. 
and that's important. It's in my wheelhouse. I haven't gone out of my way to do that, but it is something that I consciously do every week. And I made a special effort. We made like a 10 minute section of the whole show talking about it because it's, it's that big. Yeah. Really. So yeah. as a, as a fan who, who, who wants the best for the club, it's, it's that, it's that moment now where you've got to find something and, and promote it. And hopefully bring someone back in from outside the fold and bring them to the game. Absolutely. I mean, personally, I've, I've done a couple of things on social media this week. Uh, you know, I've got best part of that, 700 friends on Facebook and that kind of thing, you know, just getting out there to people who I know, I know have an interest in the game and, and, mm. you know, so I've put it, I've put things out there and let them know what's happening of the, the dates, the time, even, you know, the, the free buses and that kind of thing. For me, the, how the people I spoke to this week, though, the disappointing thing is that there are people who live in Eccles who don't know there's a game on. Mm. Now, if we're not getting the message to them who are on the doorstep of the stadium, how do the guys in, in Broughton, the Odd Soul, you know, in, in other areas of the city, further away from the stadium, how do they know what's going on? And I know the club have only just started this, and I know it's been a problem for a long time. But they're the ones we need to get back in touch with. They're the one lapsed fans from from weeks, you know, who used to go walk around the corner to the Willows, who now won't go. I know people. I spoke to people this week who won't go, um, you know, for whatever reason. The, the distance, it's this, it's that. There's an excuse for everything. They're the ones we need to get to now. Um, and I, I, I'm trying my best. I've, I've got two two extras this week coming. So, you know, it's better than nothing. Um, uh, they're there with me, not the ones that may have read my post and go, I'm going to go. Mm. And if we all do that, you know, we bug people with it. We annoy people with it. Drum it into them. I, I've said for years about advertising that somebody like Adidas or McDonald's or, or Coca-Cola, don't need to advertise because you know who they are. But every time you go to a sporting event or whatever, uh, you see a big, you know, on a World Cup or whatever, they're there sponsoring stuff. Why? Because it's there. They put it in your mind. They're telling you. You don't even need it, but you, it's there. And that's where we've got to be. We've got to tell people that you need to be here. And if you're not going to the game, you're missing out. You're the odd one. Yeah. That's what Bradford did. It's what Warrington did years ago. It's what Sale did. To, to get their crowds up, and that's where we need to be. I, t- I wouldn't I wouldn't be disappointed with bringing two new people because I reckon obviously the whole of the fan base, if we all brought two people, suddenly becomes a sellout. <laughs> but you know mm. that that's that's the that's the important thing. Paul King talks about bringing one extra person. So just try your best just to do something in your wheelhouse to to promote this game on on Sunday and the club. I don't know what lots of people have different scenarios in their lives with family and work. Yeah. And it'd be wrong for me to say, get out there, post the leaflets, do this, do that. If you haven't got the, 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 the facilities to do that, you know what you can do as an individual to promote this club and this game. Go and do it. Go yeah. and do it. Paul King said it uh, on, on the big meeting. That's the important part of the whole process is the new people in the Reds uh, Rise Together campaign who were bought in the club doing that little bit extra to make it make yeah. the magic happen. And, uh, and that's the important thing. And that's what it's a, it's the first yeah. real test yeah. for me. If we do get a, a big uh, attendance, then we usually get success. Well, I, the, the other key is that for the first time in God knows how long, there's no football. Mm. There's no... I, I, I look, uh, you, you can have a look at the sport for Sunday and tell me what's on in this local area that people might go to instead of coming to watch Salford. Mm. You know, that's there won't be much. I mean, there'll be a lot to do because we're based in an area of, you know, activities everywhere. But for a sporting sort of uh, contest or anything like that, and then there is the armed forces element. Yeah, You know, it's a chance to just show your respect to them and, Maybe put a few quid into you know a bucket for them and who knows. But uh, yeah, it's, it is a big thing for us. And I think we, we've got to aim at. I know Paul wants over eight thousand for this game. Uh, I've said to people this week. I think if it was at the Willows, you'd have absolutely no problem with that. Mm. I'm not sure eight thousand is achievable. It might be, but if we get to seven, I mean, con- considering our average this year is below five. I mean, that's massive. 
what's that in, 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 in a couple of weeks? Who knows when we've got League to come, Saints to come, Warrington to come. But we can't, if we get, keep getting results, mm. that's when we'll get to these. This, this is a big step from what we've had so far against Huddersfield, Hull KR, Hull, Catalan, you know, Wakefield, Castleford, who haven't travelled well. This is it, because Wigan will bring a decent number. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It should, it'd be good to see. Um, and, and, you know, hopefully the game matches everything that's going on around it. And that's the important thing. Obviously, you're talking about sort of growing the attendance. And I know you say we say 5,000 was, was our average attendance. Bit, and bit lower, yeah. you look at the, the Reds rise again, um, leaflet thing, and, and we said that we're our... Incre- our attendance increase, I think it was something like 25%. Mm. So if if we get a 25% increase on our average attendance, that'd be an extra 1,200 people. Would that be considered a success? Or are we going big? Are we thinking two and a half? Are we going 50% increase? Well, we, we want, obviously, you want the higher figure. Um, but I, I for an extra... 12, 1,500 people on the gate. I mean, that's 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 a lot. That's mm. a lot of people. Um, but again, yeah, we do want more than that. I, I, I'd like to say I'd like to see over seven there at least on mm. on Sunday, uh, and then from then on through the season, if we can keep getting sort of six six and above, you know, for the till the end of the season. You look at the end of the season average crowd or what it was up from last year. That's where my marker comes in. You can do it for one game. We can have a massive crowd. We could ten thousand could turn up on on Sunday, you know. But it's following it up, and and a couple of weeks later, when we've got whoever at home, and it drops back down to four and a half. You know, that's yeah. that's the test for us now. It's getting this crowd in and then keeping them. Yeah, I think the key to that park is data retention. If you're if you're bringing new people, let's say you speak to your mate in the pub on Friday uh, who doesn't go to the game he says right well, come Sunday with me if you're getting his ticket right get his email address get his telephone number so you can give it to the club and say look my, I want my mate on your database so then you they can they can feed in information regarding the club and potential new tickets that is the key that's that's little details like that make the difference we could get 10,000 people turn up but if you don't collect any data you might as well only get two. Yeah. There's no point. Yeah. So agreed. Big moments, like I said, big opportunity for fans to go out there, promote it, grab the people, get the data, give it the club, and we can all grow together. Well, sounds good to me. Let's uh, <laughs> let's hope we can do it. Yeah. Other news, Parky, as well. We talk about advertising. Uh, the club have got a new deal with. I think it's called Clear Channel UK for the big billboard things, yeah. electric billboard things, which is great. We always talk about the billboards. Uh, remember the glory days of the Willows where they were like wooden, the top of East Lane, and they'd have just like paste them on every week. Times have changed. Technology's moved on now. Uh, and now we've uh, I've got electronic uh, billboards now, which is great. Obviously, put them in, put them in, them in places of high volume of traffic or you know, pedestrian access will help. So it's another opportunity for the club to promote the, the brand and the team and the club. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember the the A, the A boards. They were yeah. Yeah, they, they cropped up all over the place, didn't they? I think that was Trish Goldsmith's idea, wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. it? Um, it worked, I suppose. The gates went up yeah. a little bit at that time. So uh, it is, for me, it's about, like I've said before, it's about just getting it out there, getting, making people aware that you exist and and what's happening. And these, I mean, these boards, this clear channel, you know, I've, it's one of them weird things that you know and you don't know how you know, but I know of Clear Channel. I know, you know, probably sat in a car and looked at their boards and seen underneath, it says Clear Channel. Or some say, oh, you know, they've got the, their name of their company. I'm, I don't know. It's just one of them things. As soon as I read it, I went, oh, I know them. I don't know how. Um, but yeah, yeah, brilliant step forward. You know, these, these boards are coming more and more, you know, the electronic boards around the city, you see more and more of them. Um, uh, and like you say, they're all in key places because that's what advertisers do. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's brilliant. That's exactly, that's the step that we need. This is where, you know, this is what we were promised for all this money that's been invested. But these were the, these were the changes that we were looking to make to, to, to help us, you know, have a marketing campaign. Well, this is it. And 
I think it's going on for till the end of the season, isn't it? Uh, and and that's that's brilliant. That's absolutely fantastic. And what what one thing that I will say can come from that is if you own a business and you see that you you could you could get in touch with Salford and say I'll be the match sponsor next time or I'll be this or I'll be that and your your company's logo can go on that board. More money will come in because people think well, that's that's simple. It's just advertising for everybody. So it, it's a, it's a whole sort of gamut of, of uh, opportunities for us. Um, but I've always I've always said the one thing we one of the things we don't do we've never we've never advertised we've never shown people that we exist. Um, and and that's the one thing we've got to do. We've just got to get into people's minds, get them to come once, let them to see what it's all about, and then they might go. I love it or I hate it, whatever. I know Paul Paul has also mentioned uh, about, you know, communities. You know, Salford's a very diverse place these days and certain sections of the community may feel excluded from rugby and sport in, in, in this country or whatever. And that's, that's something we've also got to get in touch with. We've got to, you know, you look around, like I mentioned Eccles before, what a diverse sort of place it is. You only have to drive down Liverpool Road. You know, how many of them people would feel comfortable going to get? How many of them would be approached to say, please, this is your team as well. You you live here. This is your, you know, we represent what you, you are. And that's where we've got to go as well. And I think that's the next step for me. Mm, I think it's like you say, a mix of real um, advertising, as in advertising yeah. boards, and guerrilla advertising yeah. for me, as in personal talking to people promoting the club pushing it mixture of that we uh, we go in the right direction for me other news parker uh board member update the club announced early last week uh, that there is new people added to the board which is exciting yeah. um i'll go through the names uh, anna what more alex Roma, heather robinson Ian Turner, Oliver Randall, and Shan Ahmed, all now members of our board after the Reds rise together uh, thing. Yeah, well, they, they, they'll all bring um, their own sort of speciality to it. Yeah, that, that's another thing we've always needed. I, 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 I spoke, spoke to, to Paul King about this a while ago, and he he said, you know, we both agreed that there are people who watch Salford or any sports team who have expertise or ideas in certain areas who don't offer up or have never had the chance to offer up what they think. And, mm. and these people now are in place and they, they can be approached about this and they, they'll have some background in whatever part of this, you know, you want to be part of. Uh, if it is marketing, it is a promotion, if it is, you know, a financial thing, whatever, uh, a, you know, a development issue. You can now approach these people and say, this is your, you know, like, like in many ways, just like your local MP. You take your idea to them or your, your question, your query, take it, let them look into it, let them find out what it is. And we have people now in place to do a job of work that they're supposed to do. Not somebody who, who one minute's got to tell, sell tickets, got to answer the phone, got to go and clean somebody's boots. You know, it's, it, it, that's the way we've run for years. Now we have people in place to look after certain sectors and you can join them and you can help them and you put your input in. And if you've got, you know, an idea and you think the club haven't tried it or it might be worth it, something, or you've seen it at another club, go to them, approach these people, find out who deals with that section of what you want and speak to them because that's what they're there for now. And they can yeah. then take this forward, go and sit at the board meeting on, on behalf of us and say, somebody's come up with this idea. What do we think? Can we do it? Is it, you know, is it affordable? Is it is it reasonable to do? And that's that's what we've always needed. And I think it's brilliant. It's like, like the club's become, in the last three, four years, it's like it's suddenly become professional, would you believe, after 150 years. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're getting there slowly, but it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? The right people in the right places. Yeah. Round pegs in round holes, Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Financial experts, retail experts, marketing experts, just people who are used to operating uh, in big in big business yeah um sports business as well and like you said Parker, our club will grow with their experience and it's an opportunity to to engage with them and, and say 
you know, how can you move our club forward? I'm hoping we'll get a few on the podcast yeah. later to give them opportunity to get into club and get their feet under the desk and, and figure out how it all works before we start peppering with questions about how they're going to turn the club yeah. around. Or not really turn the club around, move the club forward even more than we are now. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, we'll That'd be, be able to get a couple of them on uh, in the next uh, sort of months to come. Other news, uh, Parker, uh, the Graham Morris has brought uh, a new book out celebrating 150 years of Soul for Red Devils. Um, we've got, well, if so I've got the select the uh, the old Bible, yeah, which is a uh, which is from him, uh, goes to 1992, and um, so this upgrade from 1873 to 2022 uh, is much needed. Because there's lots of uh, stats from sort of players in games from 1992 that isn't covered in the old one, which will be covered in the new one. So I'm sure you'll be at the the, the front of that queue, Parky, when it, it when it goes off pre-sale and goes to sale. This is possibly the most exciting thing that's happened to me in a long time. Um, <laughs> look, as a sad stats up as I am, this is. This is heaven. Like you say, the, the original Bible that you've got, the Daryl mm. Platt book, um, is, it's been well thumbed in our house. Uh, yeah, he's it's, it, it's still all in one piece, but only just. Um, I think I've read it cover to cover about 17 times. Mm. Um, I, it's, yeah, I mean, it's great to have these facts and stats. I mean, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I find it interesting, but there are also little, little, little anomalies that come up and you go, I didn't know, know that, or I didn't know about him, or I don't remember that game, or you know, it's, it's brilliant to have, and it, it will tell the full history of, of our club to, to this day. And then, don't forget, I mean, that was published in 1990, 91, you know, a long time ago. Mm. A couple of generations in some, you know, families who don't know th- th- this history of Salford or, or what are or only watched in the last two or three years, who, you know, can find out about everything that we, you know, we all dear, we love, you know, people like myself and, Obviously, we mentioned, you know, uh, Paul Hume in the past, who's, who's you know, a, a big stato and people like that, Andy Walsh, and, you know, and then you go into the Dave Bainbridge of the world, and, you know, all these people who, who we, you know, we, we've we studied this stuff, we know that, and it's now other people can get involved and, and understand what, what we find fascinating. Um, and for me personally, I mean, there was a period of probably... I don't know, probably the, the, the mid early 2000s, late 90s, uh, yeah, something like that, where things are all a bit of a blur. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there are games that ah, I kind of remember that, but I don't remember that. Uh, and I can look it up and, and find out who played. And, you know, um, and there'll be players that I've forgotten about. Uh, it, yeah, so it's fascinating. I'm absolutely delighted it's coming out. And uh, yeah, can't wait till it, to, till it drops on me, Matt. Yeah, you can get it from Scratching Shed Productions. You can find him on Twitter, 20 quid. I'm going to put it out there now. It's a must-have if you're a Sofa fan. So, off arm and off the QB and park it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, get, and get your copy. Uh, other news, Sofa Devils Foundation have been busy. Park it, going into schools all over uh, the, the city in Trafford. Um you know, we all know what, what, what they do in the community. Um, obviously, building up to a big game on Sunday, they're playing a key part, uh, engaging with the schools and the pupils to try and get them to the game, giving away tickets uh, to, to get to the game as well. So, very exciting times for them. Yeah, I, I did comment this week on it as well, on, on something they put on uh, Facebook, I think it was, about what they've done at the, the uh, Etihad campus at you know Man City's ground and the amount that turned up there to take part in it. I mean, it's, it's, but again, I mean, what they do and what they have done for years is still underrated. It's still mm. not talked about enough. Uh, and we've got a hell of a lot to thank them for as, as a club. Um, again, another, another, you know, group of people who've worked tirelessly and a very small bunch of people in, in getting, you know, getting our message out there as a club. And now, I hope they get to see the fruits of their labour come true, but they, they're everywhere. They, you know, like you say, they're, they're in Trafford, they're in Manchester, they, they've been Stockport, you know, they go to Oldham and Rochdale and, you know, wh- wherever you want. And, and I know on, on Monday night, they had the, I think it was Monday, they had the uh, the sessions back at the stadium again, my, my nephew attends. And my brother was saying, the amount of Wigan and Warrington and Lee shirts, St. Helens shirts there, people coming from other areas to be part of this. Now, 
these these people obviously if you're a Wigan fan you want to play for Wigan if you're a Saints fan you want to play for Saints everybody's going to make it but they know that we exist we, they know what we offer mm. you know we're, we're open to everybody and I, I think the work that these people are doing is it, it's incredible really and, and we need to we need to shout about it more the club needs to shout about it hopefully we can do now um, but yeah you know we've got so many kids playing now and the interest again seems to have sparked again. I don't know. I mean, obviously, having a good first team has done that. Having the women's team has done that. Everything else is going on at the club at the moment. But, but what, what, the, what the development guys do is, it, it, it is phenomenal for, you know, like I say, for very little credit sometimes. Um, and I know they do it because they love the game and they love the club. But, um, so, you know, going out to these other areas and saying, you don't even know what rugby league is, never mind Salt and Red Devils. At the end of this session or whatever, you will know who they are and what it is. And if you've then got an option, you know they exist. You can go home to your parents and say, oh, I'm going to watch rugby on Sunday. Who are you going to watch? I've got a ticket for. Off you go. And there you go. Just, you know, it's it's not simple. It's not easy, but it sounds it, but it's not. But, you know, these guys are just, they're just brilliant. And I can't, yeah. you know, I can't thank them enough. Yeah, a real celebration, um, you know, what they achieve, you know, celebrating and promoting, you know, what, what, like you said, the engagement in the community. Also, Parky, uh, a school celebrating is St. Joseph's. They won the Rugby League Nines National uh, Cup and now are champions. Uh, it says on the foundation Twitter that they've only lost one game in two years. So I'm not sure wow. whether they're as good as the, the Paul Parking. Uh, Echoes Roosters team of the, the mid eighties, uh, but they are, that's going some. Yeah, no, they're not that good. Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. I mean, what I will say is, I, I remember schools rugby in, in, in Salford when I was, you know, uh, when I was a lad. Got old, um, <laughs> and it it was it was rubbish. The teachers didn't want to know really. It was something that some offered. I think. I think five schools played in Salford at the time, high schools. You know, I mean, it just wasn't enough. Uh, and now all these schools are doing it. And, and successfully, like I said, there's this interest again that's been sparked. But, you know, St. Joseph's, not a traditional, what I would consider a traditional rugby league school. Um, and, and, you know, through through the, the help they've got and everything, you know, the club have given to them, you know, as well as the hard work of the teachers and everybody else involved. I've got to this this point, and it's brilliant. You know, we're talking nationwide. Mm. You know, we're talking people from proper big rugby league areas, strong areas, places where places where you know everybody in the school probably plays rugby compared to, to you know to, to sort of Greater Manchester, where football is obviously dominant, but you know basketball's big and you know, everything else. And, and the key is for us that we we we've got these schools involved, which opens up a bigger pool of players for the future as well, that we can hopefully take the pick of. So if these guys, you know, continue to, to develop and join the, you know, local amateur clubs, makes them stronger, then we hopefully can get the pick if we can get an elite academy again, which, you know, we need. Um, we, we can keep, you know, we, we can get the best of it and benefit from, from the hard work that's been put in from the bottom up. Yeah. Talking about uh, amateur clubs, uh, Blackpool Scorpions. I think the foundation have had a link up with them as well. I read that somewhere uh, this week. That's a, another, uh, like you said, reaching out into a possible a rugby league, not not a hotbed anyway. Um, you know, giving a, a, them an opportunity to, to engage in the game and you know link up there. It's exciting. Uh, also, Salford City Roosters are looking for sponsors uh, for their advertising boards around the around the pitch. Obviously, our uh, premier um, amateur uh, team in in the in the area. If you own a business and you want to advertise, would be a big opportunity. That uh, great, you know, great club. Obviously, I, I'm, I'm probably a little bit biased as well, but yeah, <laughs> just it is. I mean, the setup there now is great. Anyone who's been to the clubhouse will tell you that it's you know it's really good. The people involved there. Uh, I, I, Again, you know, I've said it a few times, all amateur clubs, anybody who works at an amateur club who, who puts their time in, you know, he's, he's an absolute credit. Um, so, yeah, not, so, yeah, it's all for the Roosters are obviously looking for it, but, you know, feel free to pick your club. And, uh, you know, but if you are looking, you know, maybe you've got a couple of quid spare, you want to advertise your local business, get in touch with them because, you know, it's, it, I, I dare say they're not asking for millions to, to do this, you know, but 
it'll help the local community, it'll help that club, uh, and probably help yourself in some ways. But uh, yeah, the, the the step up in in from where I played there, and it was a good club then, but now you see it, it feels professional in a way. It's, mm. it's, it's mad, but yeah, no, I, I, you know, I'd urge anyone to get involved best they could. Yeah, so obviously contact them, see if you can. Uh... Help them out and obviously get your business on a on a board around the pitch. Uh, final bit of news, Parker. Uh, two of our ladies uh, team are doing a um, abseil on Friday from Barton Square. Megan Cundaliff and Phoebe Partington uh, will be descending from the big tower um, to, tomorrow uh, for St Anne Hospice. Uh, rather them than me. Uh, I'd have to say, uh, but there is a GoFundMe page uh, set up. Um, so if you want to, if you feel like you, you know, obviously want to help them, click on the link and uh, give them some juice. Yeah, I agree. Right with them than me, I won't be doing it. Um, mm. But then, you know, they play rugby every week. So yeah, I don't think they care for their own uh, safety do they, that much. Um, as what I mentioned, I, mess- I listened to Megan on, a, on the Women's Super League podcast. Uh, earlier this week, brilliant listen. I'd urge anyone if you've got a bit of time, give it a listen. She was she speaks really well. She's a you know a bit obviously not a credit to the club in, in what she says, but it gives her her background and everything and how she got into the game. Um, so yeah, just you know while 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 she's climbing down a, a building, you can give her a listen on on there. Yeah, but I did a bungee jump once, which was uh, yeah. But thing is, when you jump, you go past the point of no return, don't you? And you have to just sort of admit that there's only way it is down. Um, but that was a tremendous feeling. It forwards and backwards when I was in, in my youth when we had no fear. Um, but yeah, abseiling's a bit different. I and mean, it's like having to hold the wall and oh, I don't know about that. It's uh, yeah, tricky, tricky biz. But yeah, good luck to both. Uh, obviously doing it for they say and Auspice, which is which is great. Obviously, you know, they need as much uh, funding as possible in, in the current times. So get yourselves on that GoFundMe page and uh, put some juice in their tank. Uh, just before we go on to 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 the match on matches on uh weekend park here, let's talk about the new uh well the potential new rule uh, that rugby league are trying to bring in regarding high tackles. A uh, lot of talk about the the players' welfare and and headshots and you know how it's affected uh, you know ex players brains and things like that and they're looking at ways of making the game safer obviously there was a trial uh, in Bradford last week uh, academy level where they decided to lower the the high tackle uh, line to just below the armpit i think it was uh, which resulted in 59 penalties and 82 points in the whole game um, thoughts on that, Parker? Uh, do, do you think that is a good way to make our game safer? Um, I suppose it makes it safer, uh, but I, I don't particularly agree with it. Um, mm-hmm. This isn't a new thing. I remember this in the 80s and then 90s, and it, it crops up all the time. And the, the problem is now that people are being sued for, for, for things. I mean, you... I, I always knew the danger of playing rugby league. I'm sure anyone who does knows the danger of playing rugby league. Same as boxing, same as, you know, any physical contact sport. You can get injured and it could, you know, it, it could be bad. And I'm not uh, I'm not saying that's, you know, worth the risk. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. For me, I, I, I don't know how, how they'd manage it. I really don't. But if, if that's something that's going to worry people, make everyone wear head guards. Mm. Do that. I don't, I, I can't. How can you tell somebody who's been playing the game since they were four, who's now maybe 30, to ch- completely change your tackling style, to not tackle? It's not natural for you. You can't just do it like that. We were all like that from generation. If you said now, anybody who starts playing rugby league now, you know, from the age of six or whatever, this is your tackle zone, mm. right? The, 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 the trouble is, they, they say this about the high tackle and all. We've seen Andy Akers get knocked out the other week with a knee to the head. Yeah. Because he was tackling low. Now, his technique wasn't brilliant at the time. I'll be honest, he had his head on the wrong side. But at the same point, that can happen. You can get an elbow to the head. You can bang your head on a tough surface. You know, at the moment, the grounds will be fairly hard. What? How can you say that these injuries that these players now have, 
that, that, that you know alleged these these you know head injuries were caused by high tackles. How many mm. actually were caused by high tackles? We don't. There's there's no way we can know this. And I think it's I think it's just one of these knee jerk reactions that seems to happen in society a lot of these days. Where oh we've got to stop that. We can't. Have, I, I'm I'm as concerned as anybody else with player welfare. You know mm. I, I don't want to see a player get injured. We nobody does. We don't want to see players missing weeks and weeks of, of seasons or having the careers ended. But it's a tough sport. And that's, you know, that's the way it is. And I don't think... Well, so where do you start? Where where does the high tackle come in? I don't understand, you know, where... Do you, what if you hit across the chest, but then you bounce up into somebody's... If he's wearing pads or something. I don't, I don't get the whole thing. And it's... I, I don't think it needs changing. I absolutely don't. Uh, and if you're concerned that you may get hit injury, like I say, buy a head guard. Yeah. Talking as a, a particularly poor rugby player in my youth, I found rugby players to be a special breed that just wanted it. For me, to be a rugby player, you've got to be fit, yeah. you've got to be strong, you've got to be fast, you've got to be brave, you've got to be mad. Right? The top, top players are, are all five of them. Mm. I was none of them. So that's why I'm, I'm sat on this side of the microphone rather than on the other side of the microphone most of the time. I think the professionalism that rugby league has, has sort of gone through, that, that transformation from amateur to professionals. Rugby players are just specimens now, aren't they? There's no, there's no fat on them. They're all muscle. They're all big. They're all fast. And I suppose... For me, what I would change, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the high, the high tackle rule. What I would like to change in rugby league to make the game safer, I'd, I'd bring it back to what it was in the, I think it was the sixties. So instead of having ten yards between mm-hmm. uh, the play the ball and the defensive line, I'd go five, because then it's like speed versus power equals impact in it. Mm-hmm. So if you reduce the 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 space to run into, which is which is five yards, they don't reach a top speed in contact. So then the player who's involved in the players involved in the contact aren't yeah. hurt as bad as if they were running from ten meters. I did read a report brought out in Australia. I probably might put it on our socials about how they talked about reducing the the ten mm. meters to five meters mm. and how it affected sort of players. Where, when it was ten meters, they were they were running more in support of the player rather than with the ball. And in defence, they were sort of tracking back more because obviously they had more meters to get, yeah. didn't they? Because they were running back ten, not five. And so, of the players were were, were were particularly active more. They were just covering more ground. And I think that's an that's an aspect that I would like. To, if I could, that's what I would change because I, I just think we we want. It would change the dynamic of the game, definitely, because obviously you've got five less yards to work in. So your pl- your playmakers would have to shift the ball much quicker uh, to to get an advantage. Rally ball would be you'd have to fling it out to you to Tim Lafayette from the play the ball to get anywhere up the field. But it would make it would make interesting. The game would adapt, and I think that's a way of making players safer uh, for me. But I would say, but we'll have to wait and see how it goes. I suppose. I think it's a good point. I mean, I, strangely, I think Paul Rowley would like that because he likes, you know, he, he talks about the game how it used to be, mm. um, and I think he would create more skill in a game because you would have yeah. to work faster, think faster. I, I remember was it Carl Harrison who said when he was coaching that that most tackles when you run a ball in and you run into the first man have the same impact as a car crash mm. on your body. Now that's, you know, you think about that, like, what? But it, it would be, I mean, if you've got two 17, 18 stone athletes hitting each other head on, you know, that's a lot of force. Um, so maybe reducing it is, is right. I mean, we're all right with some referees because they don't take anyone back the full 10 anyway, but that's that's me being silly. But um, I think, yeah, I think it, it could work or, or something along those lines. That's where the change needs to be, not, not in the tackle. I mean... I look at somebody like Kevin Simfield, who who played the game for years and years, and you know, I mean, he still looks exactly the same as he did when he started. He was a forward, you know, he, he must have took knocks, he, he but he didn't, you know. I think 
some people are more susceptible to things. That's another thing. You know, medically, you may have, a, you know, already an issue there or something that would develop in later life anyway. There's no, there's no way of telling me this at the moment. You know, I don't know. But in 10 years' time, my marbles might have slipped. Who do I blame? Mm-hmm. You know, I can't. Was it because I got a bang on the head when I played, you know, 15 years ago? No, I don't know. But at the same point, I think you might have something there about about that, about the, the sort of meters, 10, 10 meters to run is, you know, plus you come in, if you're running from 10 metres behind anyway to get the ball, then another 10 metres again or whatever, you might make 15 before you've hit somebody. Mm. That's that's a lot of impact. And if there's two or three in the tackle at the same point, and we are talking athletes, we're talking solid muscle. Um, it's worth looking into, but I don't I don't think we need to change the, the, the high tackle rule. I think it'd just become crazy and we, we wouldn't get a game. Yeah. I just think it's a a, 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 fli- a a reflex action there yeah. where they're thinking, what can we do to stop people tackling high? Or oh, just just ban it, but it changes, like it's a 82, uh, no, 59 penalties in a game. I mean, it's like every whatever, what minute is somebody getting pinged for something? Yeah. And, you know, I, it, it, unfortunately, it's a blunt instrument that they need to be a bit more clever yeah. uh, for me. Um, it would change the game moving from from... 10 to 5 but it went from 5 to 10 mm. but players weren't athletes well they were but they weren't athletes mm. as we are know now so they weren't generating the same speed and they weren't involved in the same impacts as these players are <laughs> now uh, but yeah that'd be interesting if I got a chance to speak to somebody of any ilk I'd be saying well how about reducing the 10 rather than making a, making it 5 not 10 but we'll see how it plays out I'm sure we'll all be uh, experiencing what, what, what the result is of that in the next uh, couple of years so uh, that's all the news, Parky. Now we'll look forward to the games uh, this week. And so we'll start with the reserves, Parky. They're in action against Wigan on Monday, the 26th of June, at the Salford City Stadium, 7 pm kickoff. Uh, obviously, a defeat away at Castleford in the last outing, mm. having a man sent off didn't help. Got in the arm wrestle. Fortunately, Castleford found a, found a way to win the end, but hopefully, they'll, uh, they'll put that to the back of the heads and get ready for the Warriors on Monday. Yeah, it sounded like we were a bit unlucky at Cast, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I don't think things quite quite went our way, but playing Wigan, I mean, you can imagine Wigan's reserves, can't you? You know, they, 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 they'll have great lads from the academy, they'll have players who may be missing out on, just missing out on the first team. Uh, that's a massive test, a massive test for the boys. Um, I, you know, it's a shame we haven't got a bigger squad where we could... I say it every week, we need a bit of experience in there to help them out, maybe, um, at certain times in the game. Um, but what, one thing I will say about these, these reserves is, yes, at the moment, because of the way we're set up, we, we probably do lose more than we win. But they're never down hard. They never, they never give up. They just, every week, they fight for it. And, they, you know, mm. they, 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 they come out at, at the other end and you, you sort of go, well, you, you know, you can't ask for any more than that. Um we, like I said before, we definitely need an elite academy. That's that's something that we need to be able to to advance this this thing because we've got lads there who would be playing academy rugby, you know, and they're not. They're, they're playing reserves against against some top players some weeks, you know, coming back from injury and that kind of thing, getting in the resies. And um, but yeah, no, it's, it'll be. A, I mean, it'll be a good challenge for them. And and they, you know, I dare say, quite a few of our lads in the reserves might be. From that area, from the Wigan area, anyway, or Lee or whatever. So they'll have a point to prove, and um, yeah, so it could, it could be interesting. I, I was when I saw it, I thought, you know, I wouldn't mind going down and watching that. I'll, I'll, I'll have to see, you know, how I'm fixing it getting down there. But I, I think, I think it'd be interesting to see because that's a test. Because any time you come up against Wigan at any level is is a massive test. But certainly at that that kind of level, um, it's. It's going to be a big challenge for them, but I just want to see how they fare. Yeah, it's a challenge, but it's an opportunity because yeah. you're playing against Wigan, uh, who are, like I say, the 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 built for rugby league and Wigan. Everyone plays, so to, to be in a Wigan reserve side, you must you must be looking at, you know, moving forward to at least Championship, mm-hmm. Super League. Mm-hmm. So to face them gives you a chance to see where you are. 
in your development and that, and that's and that's you know a, a key thing I'm you know Stuart Wilkinson he, you know he's a, he's a great coach great experience in the game and he's yeah. obviously nurturing these lads to, to 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 grow into good rugby players and, and good people as well and we had him on the show sort of last year talking about the the pathway that he wants to send these his players on and, and that's what this reserve team is it's it's not particularly about uh, results and finishing top of the pile it's about being better rubber players and, and better people at the end of it yeah being prepared for life as a as a professional player that's you know that's mm. the key um it, it's it, yeah it's a tough one for him uh in many ways i mean i'm just thinking of wigan this year the players that they've dropped into the first team when they've had injuries and you've watched them and gone wow you know, and then that lad then goes off the scene again. You think, where's he gone? He's gone back to the reserves. You know, we, we can't do that. We can't. Do, but but at the same point, there is a bit of talent in our reserves. There are good players there. Um, I like to say, it's just a shame that we're all thrown in together. You know what mm. I mean? It's one, we can't have a bit of everything. But um, no, like you say, it's a good test for them. It really is. And, and I hope, you know, they, they just keep doing what they're doing, keep their heads up and, and, and just keep fighting every week. Yeah, so Monday night, Sofa City Stadium, 7 pm kickoff, get sales down there, support Stuart Wilkinson's lads. So let's move on to Sunday and Wigan at home. Big game for Paul Rowley's men. Obviously, the disappointment of losing in the Challenge Cup uh, will hopefully inspire the boys on to a big performance against the Warriors. Yeah, they'll, they'll, we'll, be, we'll be fired up for this one. Uh, the players owe it to themselves, to be honest. To, to come out and and show what show the world what they are actually about, you know that last week I know it was on beer play or whatever, but people watched that and were gone. What's the hype? You know what they are about. Mm-hmm. They, they were there was nothing there that was entertaining. This week, you know, we we get chance now in front of a decent crowd. I would hope to 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 provide that entertainment that we know we can do. Um, again, tough, very tough. We're going you know won last week in a game against Warrington, but. It wasn't great. It wasn't a great performance. It wasn't a great game in many ways. Uh, I think I think the commentary team hyped it up to more than what it was. If you broke it down into the constituency of what that game was about, I don't think there was that much quality on show. Now I'm not mm-hmm. saying we're, we're going to have quality because they are. They, they, you know, they're, they're they're up there in the league for that reason. They are a, a fantastic team and you know a big unit in the pack. And you've got game winners. You've got Bevan French who. He's easily the best, you know, game winner in, in this country at the moment. You've got Jai Field who can score a try from anywhere. Um, you know, their the, the whole team is made up of, of quality. But it's our chance again to step up and we need to keep, you know, we need to get back on the horse, but we need to keep this run going in the Super League. Um, uh, you know, win this weekend. And I think there's a bigger gap opening up between the top six and the rest. And that's where we need to be. But it, it will be tough. It will. They've got some. Like I say they've got some great players, but hopefully we can get. I think. I think Andy Ackers should be back this week, unless his injury is worse than we, than we thought. But um, which will be a massive plus because we we do miss him. Um, uh, but overall, I think I, I, I'm I'm fairly confident that we can turn them over. If we if we perform like we do most weeks, we'll beat anyone. Um, but we we've just got to get switched on, and I hope that last week doesn't have a lingering effect on us. It's a test. It's a test against the playoff team who will play at a playoff level. And we want to be a playoff yeah. team. You've got to play in a play at play at a level yeah. against the playoff team. And and that's and that's the important thing. That's the thing I'm sure Paul Raleigh will be trying to drive into his players uh, this week that, you know, we belong here. Mm. This this is this is our arena now. Yeah. You know, this is playoff rugby. This is a dress rehearsal for I don't know three months down the line, two months down the line, when we're in the playoff and we're playing, having to face Wigan at home or go somewhere away, it's levels and this is a test. After yes, yeah. after last week's disappointing result, that non-performance, can you jump two, three gears today and and and, and try and beat Wigan? And, that, and that's that's the question he will ask of his players and we'll have to see and we're, we're wondering what the answer will be. It'll be a, it will be an interesting answer uh, to see you know where we are, really. I think for me, the one thing we've got to do is tighten up our defence. Mm. Uh, we've we've conceded far too many points in, in recent. Not not cast like, but even you know even them scoring because they were they were pretty abject that night. Uh, you know the Huddersfield Cup game, things like that. We can't afford to 
to let players just run through us. And, mm. you know, last week was a, an example of that. And Wigan will do that if you let them. Their pack is, is massive. And then you have got Bevan French coming off the back of that or, you know, whatever else. Harry Smith will try and kick us to death. Well, you know, if it comes to a kicking game, I think I think our guy wins. Um mm. You know, we need we need Brody Croft to have have a chat, have a platform to play off, a bit of space, a bit of room if we can create that for him. But I think I think we'll surprise ourselves this week. I think we will be up for it, and I think the players will. We really spoke all week about we're not having that. That's not happening again. What happened last week won't happen again. Um, I expect it to be close. I, I, you know, either way, whoever wins, I, I think I think we'll all be still biting our nails with a minute to go. Uh, as as is the way with Salford, let's be honest, that's the way we like to play. But um, if we can get our defence spot on this week and just nullify what we can try and do, then we, we know we've got the attack to score points. And there'll be some players out there who want to do big jobs against Wigan. You know, we may have played for them. Partington, uh, Joey Burgess, yeah, you know, Andy Ackers is a Wigan lad. I think, you know, players like that um, will all have points to prove. So, uh, yeah, it should be it should be a belting game and one that I'm actually quite surprised hasn't been televised. Mm. Uh, but I'm glad it hasn't because it gives us a chance of getting bums on seats. Yeah, prediction time. I'm going to go Salford to win. I'm going to go for a big crown. I'm going to go for a big sunshine. Good day. Salford will win. Salford 30. We're going 22. Okay. And I'm going well, for... I- Joe Burgess, two tries. Okay. Well, uh, for, for me, uh, I believe the weather's going to turn about four o'clock. Mm. I think storms are coming, a lot of mm. rain. So we need to, for, for the way we play, I think we need to be well ahead by our time. <laughs> that's right. all. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. So um, I do fancy us. I do because of what happened last week. I think that might have just been that kick up the pants to restart, reset. Go. Um, it may have dented a few players' pride, and they need to, you know, again get back on it. Uh, it'll be very, very close. Uh, I'm going to go with a Salford win at 22 18. Um, uh, and I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm actually going to say both teams will score the same amount of tries, but we'll win it with penalties. Okay. Okay. So, what does Paul White say? I think. So that was Paul White's our prediction. It's going to be super exciting Sunday. Big thanks for tuning to this week's uh, podcast. Like I said, Park, it's always a pleasure talking to yourself every week about Salford Devils and everything that goes on. And uh, it's also amazing that our listeners put their hands in the pockets via the Kofi and help produce, uh, help us provide, you know, purchase uh, programs and things to help this podcast experience the best it can be. Yeah, you know, I've said it, say it every week. He, he, I, I still can't get my head around it, to be honest. As a, you know, I, I'm just a, I'm just a fan. This is like sitting in the pub talking to somebody about rugby. I do it every day, if I, you know, if I could. Uh, it gives the, it gives the wife a bit of respite as well. Um, I think she's happy. I think she sees it as therapy for me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, for everybody to, to just to tune in, just to listen, is is brilliant. You know, to to care sometimes about what what other people say, but. Um, no, for, for everything they do financially, it's, yeah, it just knocks my socks off. If I'm honest with you, it's, it is good, and hopefully, you know, we can we can continue to do this, and who knows in the future where we where we can go with it. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's brilliant for for people who do put their hand in the pocket, and again, like you say, in these tough times, it, it just shows the uh, the level of commitment that people have to to us and to the club. So you know, thank you very much. Yeah, blows my mind every, every time. Uh, like I say, thanks for everything you do. Big thanks for tuning in to this week's uh, Devil in the Detail podcast. I'm Rob Parks. You can find us on Facebook, Devil in the Detail SRD. You can find us on Twitter, at the ITD SRD. And you can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Radio Contact, Spotify, and YouTube. Good luck, Reds. See you next week.